It's a very familiar taste. It just reminds me of summer. It's rock melon. So your answer is rock melon? Yes. Sorry, Benjamin. <sighs> it's not rock melon. It's a really familiar flavour. It is. Try it again now. You know what it is? Oh. Banana! <laughs> I must eat a banana every week, two or three of them, and I can't pick it in a blind tasting. Fruits are oh. hard. Mm. Make sure the fruits yeah. are hard. Uh, so I'm going to make banana pancakes. I'm going to try and stick as simple as I can today. My pancakes are very traditional, old school, classic dish. It seems simple, but I'm comfortable with it, and if I can give it a twist, it might be enough to get me over the edge. Then it clicks. I'll get some choc mint from the garden. I'm grabbing choc mint here. It's going to infuse the cream in my ice cream. Choc mint's a herb. It grows just like a spearmint or a mint, but it's got this beautiful chocolate undertone to it. I think by doing some clever things like this, I can uh, keep myself out of elimination. This dish is going to be tasty. It's going to be simple and it's going to be something that people just like to eat. Once the Anglaise is cooled down, I throw it in the churner and leave it there until I'm ready. And that's my dish done. Bottle of rum <laughs> and an ice cream. Good work, Benji. Clean down. Banana pancakes is a pretty standard Sunday morning affair. I'm not feeling too much pressure or too much stress. I'm actually really enjoying the cook. The overall balance of the dish is going to be really important for something simple like banana pancakes. So I've got some bananas and pineapple stewing with a little lime juice and a touch of sugar. I'm going to use it as a chutney. I don't want this to be a sweet element. I want it to add relief. I leave the bananas stewing for as long as possible. Banana's a good ingredient to have. It's pretty versatile. You can caramelise it like I'm about to do now. The central focus of the dish is going to be caramelised bananas in a pancake. A little bit of brown sugar, some butter. They come out really nice. Banana is my hero ingredient. I've got to get it just right. It smells heaps good. Yeah, it smells nice, eh? Hey? Benjamin? Hey, gents, how do you do? Great, man. What's the dish? you got bananas, obviously, as a core. Yeah, i got bananas. So yeah. um, what I'm going to do is uh, I might take on banana pancakes. You're talking about a thin pancake. Quite a thin, thin oh, pancake. Oh, oh. Do you know Gary's from the era of pancakes? Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't start that. <laughs> I'm being serious. How many have you made in your life? A lot, but... Exactly. <laughs> So I'm going to do banana and pineapple chutney sort of going on for a little bit of freshness, chocolate sauce and a bit of chocolate mint ice cream as, as relief. Yours sounds delicious, but you've got to work faster, you've got to focus, you just got to motor. It's a lot to do, I know. Love, We're excited go. by it. Thanks, Keep guys. Going. Come on, ben. There's, a, there's a lot of things that Ben's got on the go at the moment and he's kind of um, taking his afterball a little bit. I get distracted by the ice cream. Take the paddle out. Yep. You're running out of time. I can't believe it. I forgot the chutney. Whoa! Well, careful, Ben. Ah! Scalded now. I come back and they're burnt. Oh, this is going to cost me. Hey, gents. How are you going? You're finding yourself in black a little too often. Absolutely. Just, just haven't fired in the competition, unfortunately. I think I've tried to overcomplicate things a bit. I like cooking more like that, hearty food instead of, you know, little micro. Uh, I'm only just starting to realise that that's OK. Uh, hey, you, you've seen MasterChef in the past. It doesn't have to be fancy to be delicious. Yes. If you deliver flavour and you deliver texture, it doesn't matter whether it's in a modern form or in something your grandmother would recognise. Yes. People are going to love it. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you. you. Go. Boys, what do you think? I mean, who doesn't, who doesn't love kind of bananas Caribbean, the combination <laughs> of rum and chocolate and, and bananas? So in terms of deliciousness, yeah. flavour, he's given himself every chance. I tell you what, he's pushed those bananas, hasn't he? Yeah. Certainly made sure they're caramelised.
I love the chocolate sauce. It's silky smooth and it's got that lovely hit of alcohol and the ice cream is really delicious. It's that peppermint crisp type of flavour mm, yeah. to it that is really fun and nostalgic. I love that chocolate mint. It's just a lovely flavour. I mean, it's minty, it's chocolatey. It sounds kind of obvious and silly, but it's just, it's a very unique flavour. And I think the texture of it, uh, the silkiness is just wonderful. But, he's pushed the bananas that far where they become pasty, that they've gone from being delicious and sweet to something completely different. He's overcooked the bananas. If you just gave us that ice cream and that chocolate sauce oh. with, with fresh banana or just banana cooked with a little bit of butter and lemon juice, amazing combination. But this, the starchiness of this banana throws the dish for me. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St Kilda. <laughs> and your first challenge outside the Master Chef kitchen. Cool. Just when you're getting used to being back in there, we drag your sorry asses out here. <laughs> You're cooking the ultimate barbecue for... Thousand? 1,200 <laughs> hungry punters. <laughs> Are you actually serious? Oh, my gosh. You're going to have to motor like you've never motored before. <laughs> All right, we're going to be doing this in three teams, so let's get you divided up. So what do you think in dessert? I think bananas. Thinking about like a caramelized white chocolate cream and with yes. passion fruits as well. Yes. There you go. Yes. yes. It is hectic in there. I, I think they know that they are cooking for 1,200. Orange team, safe but tasty. Lamb bubba, prawn salsa verde, and then grilled bananas and their dessert. So I love it, but they just have to execute it perfectly because there's nothing worse than an overcooked baby food banana. I'm focused on the desserts today, and I'm doing a barbecued banana with a dolce cream with passion fruit, water seed caramel, and a coconut crumb. The barbecue component for this dish is going to be grilled bananas. Uh, I'm going to get that a bit smoky, caramelized, and a bit charry. It's going to be beautiful with the dolce cream. Randall, with his dessert, can we chuck the naans in the smoker at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, chuck them in, man. Do you want chuck to? them in. So cool. do you want to smoke them before actually putting them on the grill? Yeah, smoke okay. them first. With the bananas, we've got the uh, smoking grill up to 250. So we're using it as a grill as opposed to a smoker. What are you doing here? Whatever. Testing out the bananas and how they cook. Yeah. I think we're going to use this as a grill. A grill? That's not a grill. That's not a grill. It's a smoker. It's a smoking. If it sits on there, they're going to cook slowly, and I guarantee you, you're going to mush. What are you trying to achieve? We want it to be like a sticky caramelised banana. OK. Yeah, so a little bit of chariness, but just a little bit of the flavour from the grill as well. What happens to sugar at high temperature? It, it will burn. OK. OK, so maybe afterwards I should ladle that on. Turn that first one down and see how much colour there is on it. Ooh, right, shit. so see how quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what happens with the sugar. So you need to work out how much caramelisation do you want from yeah. that sugar. Yeah, cool. I'm trying to work out how to cook the bananas. Simon's giving me some ideas. And then the judges also throwing in their 10 cents worth. How are we doing? How'd that go? Uh... <laughs> Talk to me. I'm actually getting really confused. And there's so many voices. It's really hot. I need to work out the process of how to cook these bananas, because it's really, it's you can't cook them on the smoker, because it doesn't work. OK. Hold on. So hot. Oh, Danny, what's going on now? <laughs> so we've dropped the temperature, because I thought it was going to be too high. Yeah. But then the yeah. bananas went a little bit too mushy. Sounds like an absolute nightmare. Look, it's pretty hard. I think when you're doing it en masse... You say en masse, but you've got one, one banana on there. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Really got to concentrate, keep an eye on these things. Make sure they don't overcook. Make sure I get a nice char on them. This is like a crucial part of the dish. This is the grilled part. I just want to make sure we're getting it right. Tastes good. Next up, banana rama. Caramelised banana with dolce cream, passion fruit, and a little crumb. What do we think? I think it looks great. Let's have it. And it's delicious. Great dessert for a barbecue. What about those bananas? Yeah! <laughs> 
what was shaping up to be a disaster turned out to be a triumph. Woo! Yeah. Well done. Well done, Orange team. You are safe. Yay! And then three of Australia's best dessert chefs walk through the door. I have to cook a dessert to keep my spot in finals week. Is it raining out there by any chance? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> the relief for you is we haven't got three separate desserts under there. The worry is that we've asked these three titans of the dessert kitchen to collaborate and come up with one dessert that will push you to your absolute limits. A dessert that looks so innocent, but hides a myriad of traps. Guys, do you want to show them what you bought? Today, I've brought in banana and coffee parfait. <laughs> Sprayed yellow to look like a banana. And I've brought in... smoked coconut cinnamon foam, a marathon cherry spheres, and almond pistachio nougatine. And today, I brought in a spiced and roasted banana gelato with what I call pinatella, chocolate and peanut sauce. Cherry on top. There you go. How good does that look? I think a little round of applause, huh? Um, love it, love it, love it. Uh, Darren, do you want to go through the components? Sure. There's a lot of pressure points in this dish, guys. Starting with the banana would be uh, the temperature of the banana as well as the subtlety of the coffee. You don't want to overpower that banana. It's a banana dish, not a coffee dish. Nick, can you talk to us about the gelato and how to perfect that? Basically, you need to ensure that you get rid of a lot of the moisture in the banana so that for the same amount in the recipe, you get more bang for your buck, more flavour. Christy, a foam and, of course, that spherification. A lot can go wrong there. You have to do it at the beginning of the challenge. If you put it too late, it wouldn't set. And in the end, it's just going to destroy the whole entire look. And secondly, for the cherry sphere, you need to remember to cook it at the right temperature. Because if you cook it less, it's, you want it to be burst in your mouth, but you want it to be of a syrup consistency, not like just water. I'm definitely getting nervous, and I'm definitely thinking this is going to be harder than anything I've done in this kitchen before. I've taken my bananas out of the oven and started to blitz them as a base for my gelato. I'm happy I left them in there for that extra time because it means more flavour is going to go into the ice cream. I'm trying to get things done as quickly as possible. I've got my gelato in the freezer, I've got my foam in the freezer. Now I can concentrate on blitzing this cherry base and making my cherry spheres. To make the cherry spheres, I take my spherical moulds, fill them halfway with the cherry liqueur and then freeze them. Jamie seems like he's the front leader at the moment. He seems to be really on top of it. You've got a lot to do and you've got one hour to go. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. The second batch of banana is caramelised. So I've added the extra bananas to the gelato mixture and then pop that into the freezer so it sets. The flavour has definitely improved, but I don't think that it's as strong enough as Nick's was. When I'm behind, then I need to move on to the next thing. Never made spheres before. No idea what I'm about to do, but it's going to be fun, really fun. What are you doing? Getting my ice cream in. Oh, it's already ice cream. Yeah, just about. <laughs> I go to grab out my ice cream base and I realise that I put it in the blast chiller instead of the freezer. It's frozen pretty much solid and it's not going to churn properly. Definitely don't have time to make another gelato. I have to make this one work. Getting that ice cream made and then concentrating on the rest of the um, components in this yeah, dish. Good luck, Jamie. Thank you very much. Time to start on the parfait and the first thing you need to do is make my banana custard base. I'm still on track. I know I'm the first one to start on the parfait and if I get this out as quickly as possible and straight into the chiller, I know I'm in a good place to finish this dish well. 
From what I can see, the ice cream had been started and it's chilling down, so that's great. They're getting there, but really, the parfait needs to set for me, but being my component, yeah. I'm looking at that thinking, I need to get that in the blast chiller right, right. now. I'm onto the base of the parfait, take my eyes away from the custard for a second. When I turn back, it's turned into scrambled eggs. I taste it and it tastes like eggs. I've got no choice but to start that again. What happened? I took my effort before and it was just yeah. sticking, you know, on the bottom. Yeah, it happens, so. it happens so quickly. So this parfait is your most important job at the moment. Yeah. So you need to cook that custard, yeah. get the banana in there, fold it all in there together and get it in that blast chiller for the parfait to set. Yeah. Time's so tight with this dessert, there's no room for mistakes. I'm messing it up. I'm, I'm starting to lose control. The parfait's split. I've just blitzed it to sort of bring it back, but it's lost a fair bit of air. So I take a little bit more cream, whip it to get some air in it, and then fold the parfait mixture through it. This obviously dilutes the flavour a little bit. So I add a little bit more coffee, a little bit more chocolate, just to try and get as much flavour in there as possible, because I know it's not going to taste right. Hello. Hi, Hi Nora. Hello. Come on, I won't keep you long. What, what are you making? Are you <laughs> I'm doing the parfait right now. Yeah, so good. I'm just whipping some cream and then mixing it all together, sprinkle it, the coffee in there, freezer, set, and then spray, and then, oh my god. And then, you oh can... my god. Yeah, you need to get it in the yeah. freezer, yeah. right? Oh my god. The banana. Ah. Make sure you've got all the elements you need on your bench. Two minutes to go. Ah, yeah. I take the twirls out of the oven and I go to scrape them off. They're way too thin. They're the most delicate things in the world. And I think this is never going to work. I don't think I'm going to get any up at all. Remember, everything's on the line. First elimination of the finals week. Ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, eight seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it, your time's up. Well done. Prep time's over. Now we've got three minutes to unmold and spray our banana parfait, get all our elements onto the trolley, and then go and present it to the judges. <laughs> That's great. It's intact. Ooh, nice consistency. Well, you've heard about the twirl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. You happy with this? Have you done enough to not be the worst? <laughs> I don't know whether I've done enough to stay. Um, I know there's mistakes in there, but it's a complete dish. Everything's on the plate. At one point in that challenge, it was looking questionable. Yeah, absolutely. Did you get there? So that's fantastic you've done it. All right, we'll taste. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jamie. The foam is holding up really, really well. well. thing is the sauce, the banana, the ice cream, the foam, and I love all of it. The ice cream, which is really smooth, really beautiful, it's got a great cons consistency. It's because of the amount of flavour he's managed to pack into every element. Gee, Jamie's done a good job. He has, he has, absolutely. One of you created a dish that absolutely nailed the flavours of that banana split. Jamie, you're safe.